My name is Preston and I'm the co-founder of TreatSure. We're a technology company that helps to tackle the problem of food wastage through our consumer app since 2017. And many of you might be wondering, how did I even get to a solution using a mobile app for food wastage? Well, we have to travel back in time to 2016. And that was when I was still a university student. And in my final year, and I was studying at home, I noticed my family clearing out the refrigerator of certain food items. They were parked at one corner, they were expiring. And I found out that they were actually still in pretty good condition, but it seemed like nobody actually remembered that it was in the fridge. And so I thought to myself whether or not we could actually build a platform to redistribute food away. And at that point in time, sustainability, climate change, and food wastage were not issues that were commonly talked about or, talk or discussed in the public. I was wondering whether other people had the same mindset as me in terms of uh, finding out more about food wastage. I went around my neighborhood, knocking on doors, asking them whether or not they had similar problems at home and whether or not they would be interested in such a solution. I found out an overwhelming number who actually experienced food wastage as, uh, themselves firsthand. And they overwhelmingly told me that they would not be so interested in uh, using such a solution. And at, at that point in time, it was likely uh, low receptiveness towards uh, action towards food wastage. I did more online surveys and found similar uh, feedback from the, the people who I asked. And it was also true that through an Electrolux survey that there was actually much food wastage in the households. About 51% surveyed found that they actually prepared too much food. While a second close factor for food wastage in households was because the people forgot about food and that uh, there was a fussy eater at home coming in third. Fast forward four years later, a Singapore Environmental Council study actually found similar factors in terms of improper storage and purchasing choices, which leads to household food wastage. And this time round, they found that about 80% were unclear about the differences between best before and use by dates, leading them to just throw away whatever that is expired, that they think that it's expired. And this amounts to a massive result of a 26 million kilograms of food wastage thrown that year. That is equivalent to about 68 million plates of nasi lemak, our Singapore local delicacy. And if you convert it into dollar terms, it's approximately $300 thrown away per household per year. Staggering, isn't it? But the number is not just about households. There's a bigger number out there that the National Environment Agency, our Singapore government agency, released in 2020, which revealed that the total num amount of food waste was actually 660 million kilograms. And mind you, there, there's only one offshore landfill in Pulau Samarco, and that's running out of space in 2035. So I felt within me at the earlier stage of my journey, how could we actually solve this problem? And whether or not, perhaps apart from households, businesses had a part to play. I went out to the shopping malls, to f and owners and staff and managers, to ask them on the ground what exactly causes such a problem and what they actually dealt with it, how they actually handled such a problem. Many of them actually told me that this was a very common situation and it was quite uncontrollable. So many of us would like to cast the first stone at them and blame them for creating so much food wastage. But we often don't understand the complexity of the issues that they face. And here in this talk, we will share a couple on the demand side, there are some. On the supply side, there are some. So take, for example, for the demand side, there is actually significant uncertainty about how much food to prepare, how much food they should produce. And if you're a business, actually take uh, a rainy day, for instance, it could affect you either way, depending on the nature of your business. If you're selling hot soup, a rainy day will be perfect because it will bring you great sales. But if you're selling ice cream or if you're not sheltered from the rain somewhere away from the MRT station, then you might be in hot soup because uh, that day might actually be a very bad day for sales. And so these factors actually create the wastage because much of the produced food that day might go to waste and that means unsold sales as well. Think about the circuit breaker lockdown that we experienced about two years ago. Much of the shelves were actually wiped out. Uh, not just toilet paper, as you see here, but eggs, bread, different food and essential items were actually just wiped off the shelf due to a demand surge 
brought about by people panic buying. And once that uh, panic surge actually crossed, many of the suppliers actually found that they had to uh, deal with a lot of the surplus stock that they brought in during the panic buying period. Suppliers had to constantly restock, and by the time that they had to readjust and recalibrate when the demand tapered off, it was found that actually they couldn't keep up with that kind of readjustments, and there was a lot of wastage that some other businesses found uh, excessive. We also see in the, on the demand side certain factors caused by us, the consumer. You and I play a part in this because as people, we tend to go for attractive, visually appealing images as well as designs. And in stores, especially for bakeries and restaurant buffets and grocery supermarkets, we realize that the design and the elements of visual ap ap appealing actually is actually quite an important factor in terms of attracting people to purchase their products. And they array all their shelves and all their trays and plates with glorious food of different colors and different shapes. And that often results in wastage if they are unsold. Likewise, at the supermarket, you will also notice that many of the fruits and vegetables are perfectly arranged. But what happens behind the scenes? Well, often cosmetic elements uh, that are not so appealing get chucked aside and thrown away. And that's a process we commonly call cosmetic filtering. On the supply side, however, we also see factors at play. So one of it is actually dealing with the economies of scale with bringing in products, importing as well as distribution of products. Look at this uh, beautiful carton of apples. A supplier cannot just bring in one carton of apples like that. They would probably bring in pallets and container loads of apples. And that means that there is a significant risk that if any of these cartons or pallets or containers are unsold, then that is contributing to the food wastage problem as well. Or shipment delay. Shipment delay causing certain, expir uh, certain items that perhaps were not expiring at first to in the end become nearer to expiry date when they arrive. And this could be due to various reasons, geopolitical, war, or even the COVID pandemic that we see. All of these are surplus problems that are facing businesses. So at that point in time, when I first uh, learned about these uh, challenges, I also learned that there were two choices facing the businesses. Number one, to discard, and number two, to distribute them. The discarding option is actually a much, much easier and convenient option than the distribution option. Because nobody would see them, nobody would know about them, and it was actually part and parcel of business, as they would put it. But the distribution option would involve them trying to identify which party to receive the goods, to arrange the logistics and transportation and labor in place to distribute the food items. And at and the back of their minds, they still have to worry about, let's say, the food turning bad, or even some kind of a food poisoning issue down the line if it gets distributed to beneficiaries, for instance. So all of these weigh heavily on businesses, and I felt that there was also a very manual aspect to all these processes. I wanted to use a technology aspect, so I began to explore whether we could use technology, and I came up with a mobile app that could solve the problem using technology one that could match willing sellers of surplus food to willing buyers of surplus food, and also educate the public and businesses about food wastage issues. So across my years, I've learned that technology is such a great driver for good, but at the same time, it can also be used and harnessed for sustainable development. In sustainable development goal number nine, innovation is actually one of the key uh, levers in order to further such uh, development. Over time, there are four waves of tech innovation in food waste management that I've observed across the years. The first actually was the earliest wave we call, I call it the digester wave. That involves the technology or biotechnology in particular that would help to digest and break down food waste into useful products. It could be fertilizer, compost, or even byproducts like portable water. And across time actually, innovation occurred such that things like food wastage could actually be converted into biomass and energy. A few years ago, a local university even managed to come up with research breakthroughs that would allow food waste to be converted into electricity to power our charging of phones. And the government is currently 
trialing out a co-digestion process where this food waste as well as a water waste sludge can actually be uh, broken down into biomass and useful energy. And we also hear of even black soldier flies being tapped on to try to convert this massive amount of food waste into very precious resources. The second wave is what I term the digital wave. Well, this happened around 2015 to 2017 period. And during this wave, many of these platforms and digital channels actually helped to redistribute and help to resolve the food wastage problem at a deeper level because at the, at the click of a button, you could actually just redistribute food from one point to another. And it helps to also beat the information asymmetry of where the surplus food could be found. So such sources of technology in that digital wave was actually a result of the inspiration by many of the ubiquitous startups that we see these days involving the consumer applications and platforms. So if a platform could help with sharing of uh, rights and apartments, why not the same for food wastage? So across the years, we've seen peer-to-peer -peer sharing apps, business-to-business -business channels of redistribution of food, as well as consumer business-to-consumer type of um, platforms. A third wave is the data wave, which taps on the insights, data science, and even artificial intelligence brought about by the nascent fourth industrial revolution that we're seeing right now. So these technologies in the data wave often concern themselves with trying to find out and track the wastage and how we can do better in it. So such tools will help businesses to better improve on their processes to reduce wastage and output, as well as to tailor and customize their specific operational and even manufacturing processes to reach a certain optimal level and to allow them to actually uh, contribute to sustainability. There are also consumer facing apps that are Allow, they're allowing consumers to actually find out what they store in their fridges, to track what is in their kitchen, to know when a particular food product is expiring, and so on and so forth. So it's very interesting and it's very exciting that this wave is being played out right now. The most recent wave, I would call it the derivative wave, which seeks to derive value for very good purposes, extracting economic value out of it to support an active, circular economy. So this involves not the process of digestion, but derivation of products. Our industry might term this as waste valorization or even upcycling, which is the reverse of recycling because many of these products can be tapped on to add value and to create something new. Bread that is surplus can be used to brew beer. Oils that have expired can be made into soaps. And the list goes on. So this is a very exciting area in which things can be made new to serve a food need or some product need and at the same time extend the shelf life of the original food. So you might ask, so have technology really solved the problem with so many advances in recent years? And I will honestly tell you, I don't think so because we haven't got to the root cause of our food waste, which is our food waste, W-A-Y-S. The real reason why the food waste problem is so big is because of the way we treat food, the way we regard food. And with regards to this, the UN Sustainable Development Goals number 12 would find that responsible consumption and production is the right way to go. And that is truly the solution for the tackling of uh, a problem like food wastage. Even if you have the best technologies to track your data, your food wastage, but you don't have the resolve and the commitment to actually contribute to sustainability, even if you have like all these different ways in which you can um, upcycle and recycle food wastage, but you don't uh, ingrain it into your processes, uh, there's still a problem. So in essence, technology cannot change our food waste overnight, but it can change our food waste oversight to be a catalyst of change, to prompt us to actually pause, ponder, and, and actually provide us a way to become better stewards of food resources. Thank you.